In this short demo that makes use of the dog breed classification example, we are going to show you how to enable the Kale Jupyter Lab extension. We're then going to explore the various cells of this notebook to understand step by step what is happening inside of the notebook and what the cell dependencies are. Uh, then we're going to convert the notebook into a pipeline and then we're going to view the results. Um, so if you're following along at home, we're going to assume that you've already installed Kubeflow and that you've done that via the mini KF package distribution. We're also going to assume that you've worked through tutorial number two, which is going to get everything configured uh, for this uh, example appropriately. So with that as our starting point, we can go ahead and see what is actually happening in the notebook. And we want to recall here that the idea is that we want to use machine learning to help us identify the breed of a dog by simply providing an image. So first, let's enable Kale to make it easier to navigate the notebook, uh, but also to understand what the dependencies are and ultimately uh, make it really easy to convert this notebook into a pipeline. So you can see just by enabling it, uh, we've gotten a variety of different annotations that have popped into the notebook to make it a lot easier to navigate, but also to understand what the different dependencies are. So in the first section, which is going to be step zero here, this is where we're going to look at our installation requirements as well as we are going to download our data sets. And you can see there are three data sets that you want to pull down. They're fairly large data sets, so it is going to take a little bit of time depending on your internet connection to pull those down. But you want to go ahead and pull down those data sets. And if you're curious about what these data sets look like, you can actually check them out by going to the data directory, Kale, examples, dog breed classification, and then going to dog images. You can see, for example, in the training data set, we can look at the this particular breed, which is going to be Akita's. We can actually see the images that are there. The next thing we want to do is that we want to import uh, the different uh, libraries that we're going to need in regards to the different algorithms uh, that we want to use. And then we want to install our various uh, dependencies. And we're going to go ahead and do that in those steps and set some pipeline parameters. That moves us into essentially step number one, where we want to go ahead and import the data sets of the ones that we just downloaded. That should be fairly self-explanatory. In the second step here, we're going to do our uh, detect dogs uh, piece where we're going to use a pre-trained uh, ResNet 50 model to detect dogs in images. We're going to need to first pre-process that data, make some predictions, and then we want to write a dog detector, and then we want to assess uh, the dog detector. In step number three, we want to take a different tack. Here we want to create a CNN to classify dog breeds, and we're going to do this uh, from scratch. Uh, and to do that, in this step, um, we're going to need to create our own uh, from scratch, as mentioned, and we're going to need to attain a test accuracy of at least um, 1%. So that's what's happening in step number three. Uh, same sort of stuff as you might have seen previously. We're pre-processing the data, building a model architecture, compiling the model, training the model, loading the model with the best validation loss, and then testing the model. Now in step number four, we're here. What's different is that we're going to start making use of transfer learning. So in step four, we're going to create a CNN or a VGG 16 to classify the dog breeds. And again, here we're going to be using transfer uh, learning. And what we want to do here is to reduce the training time without sacrificing any accuracy. And we're going to do that by training uh, the CNN again using our uh, transfer learning. So there's a couple of steps that are going to happen here. We're going to obtain our bottleneck features. Uh, define the model architecture, compile, train, and load the model with the best validation loss, test it, and then predict the dog breed uh, with the model. And you, you, this will start to make sense when we look at the result sets of what these, uh, these final steps are in the different models that we're showing. Now in step five, now we want to create a CNN ResNet 50 like we did before, but uh, we want to use transfer learning uh, this go around. So in this step, we're going we're gonna to do similar uh, processes we saw in one of the previous steps, but this in this case, we're using the transfer learning capabilities. So we're going to want to obtain our bottleneck features, define the model architecture, compile and train the model, load the model with the best validation loss, test it, and then we're going to go ahead and predict our dog breed uh, with the model. And then now we're going to wind it up with the final steps. In step number six, we want to write our own algorithm. And here we want to write an algorithm that's going to accept, accept a file path to an image, right? Because that's what our data set was, was just a lot of images. And first, determine whether or not the image contains a dog or not. And then if a dog is detected in the image, we want to return the, protected, the predicted uh, breed. And then in our final step, which is step number seven, we want to test the algorithm. So in this section, 
we want to take our new algorithm and see whether or not uh, it predicts the dog breed accurately. For example, <laughs> if, if there's a cat image, we want to make sure, does it think it's a cat or does it think um, it's a dog? So this is uh, the final step here, and now we're ready to go ahead and turn this notebook into a pipeline. And if you're using the Kale uh, Jupyter Lab extension, this is going to be really easy to do. You can see down at the bottom, you've got your compile and run uh, button. Just click on that button. And a couple of things are going to happen automagically for you. First, we're going to validate the notebook. Then we're going to take a snapshot. And what this means is going to take a, a snapshot of the data as well as the notebook. So if you want to essentially restore to this state, you can do it precisely. So you've got your snapshot taken care of. It compiles the notebook. It uploads uh, the pipeline. And then it starts running the pipeline. So let's go ahead and click on the view hyperlink. This brings us to the pipeline execution graph inside of the Kubeflow UI. And from here, we're going to be able to see in real time the execution of all the different uh, pipeline steps that we specified in our notebook. You can see in our first step, we went ahead and created the necessary volumes. In our second step, we loaded uh, the images of the dogs. In the third step, we are detecting the dogs. In our fourth step, we're going to branch out and we're going to run our different machine learning algorithms to see which one's going to give us uh, the most accurate results. And then we'll wrap things up with a final snapshot of the entire pipeline. So what we're interested in inspecting here is uh, the three different result sets, right? So on the first one, which is going to be our CNN VGG uh, 16, let's look at the visualizations tab, scroll down to the very bottom, and our test accuracy here is going to be 44%. Not great, right? You can see that the predicted dog breed was an English setter, when in reality, uh, it was a Dalmatian. So not too hot. Now let's look at the CNN ResNet uh, 50 run. Again, we're on the visualizations tab. We scroll down to the very bottom and we can see that our text accuracy is almost double, right? It's 84%, which is great. And we can see that the predicted dog breed was a Dalmatian and the actual dog breed was a Dalmatian. So this is a great run uh, or great level of accuracy on that one. And then remember we had our CNN from scratch uh, step as well. And on this one, what we were actually chasing was at least a 1% level of accuracy. If we scroll down to the very bottom, you can see that we just made it. So this is a quick example of how you can take a notebook uh, using Kale, make it super easy to not only annotate it, so it's easy to understand what's going on inside of the notebook, as well as what the dependencies are, and then finally how to easily convert it into a pipeline so you can then get those visualizations inside of the Kubeflow Central Dashboard.